Back and forth, we're going two shot, what are we doing? We're gonna do this, here we are, downtown St. Louis, <laughs> and it's the racing herd of family, Father Brian and son Colton. Here we are at St. Louis, a lot of activity going on here, and it's only a Thursday night. How excited are you two to be back at this track? Super excited. Um, obviously, my dad drove here when, when he was racing and uh, did part of his career, and, and I love this place. Uh, it provides pretty good racing, and it's always fun to be, uh, be racing under the lights. And Brian, the, uh, what do you remember? The, the track was a little bit different back then in terms of, uh, you know, the kart cars that you drove were, were, were a handful. The old IRL cars were a handful. They've done a lot of work on this race course that maybe that course didn't have back in the day. It's still, you know, short ovals are always a challenge. And the thing that's unique about this track is you got a really tight turn one and two and then a more open but flatter turn three and four. So the, the, the toughest thing here is always to get set up where your car is good on both ends of the track. That's almost impossible. So you try and find the best compromise. And that's, that's what I think is great about this track is it's, it's its own unique thing. It really isn't like anywhere else we go on the schedule. Uh, but it's late in the season. Points are getting uh, more and more important. So uh, it's a place where you really need to perform. And Colton, you don't get a chance to run on ovals very much. So how important is it you know, to come to a track like this? Uh, yeah, obviously, with the main goal being to move up into, into IndyCar, where, where they do a lot more ovals than, than Indy Lights do. Um, it is important to make make the most out of the time that you have, and, uh, and yeah, we had a really good test here, so I think the car is going to be super strong, and I'm looking forward to it. A couple of weeks ago, you tested with Harding Racing at Portland. How did that test go, and how big a difference was there in the IndyCar from the Indy Lights? From my point of view, I think it went really well. Um, you know, I got up to speed the car nicely, and... It's not that big of a difference. I think you know, Indy Lights and Cooper Tires and Moss, so they've all done a good job uh, getting the Indy Lights car to, to where it's not that big of a jump. So, you know, uh, I, I kind of didn't really expect that. The, uh, the the speed was not that big of a difference. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, it, it's still quite a bit quicker, and, and the brakes are quite a bit better, but it was not as big of a jump as I thought it was going to be. And uh, we at Auto Week did a major feature on your uh, team owner, George Michael Steinbrenner IV, and I know he's been a key player in helping you uh, get up to IndyCar. Uh, what's the relationship like between you and little Steinbrenner, as we like to call him? It's, it's awesome. You know, it's, it's, it's weird because we're both young, and I've never really had a team owner that's similar age to me. He's three years older than me, so... Um, yeah, it, it's strange. I see him more of a as a friend than a team owner. And he said that he's turned you into a Yankee fan, which was uh, the number one thing he wanted to make sure that he did. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I think before I wasn't a baseball fan in general, but now I'm, now I'm a Yankee fan. Now, your dad, on the other hand, he's told me in the past, he grew up in Michigan, he was a Tigers fan, and when he moved to Southern California, didn't you become an Angels fan, or were you a Dodger Dodgers, fan? Dodgers. You were a Dodger fan. Yes. So to have a Yankee fan in the family, I mean... It's okay. I'm still a Dodger fan, <laughs> unless they're playing the Yankees, which which really is uh, uh, in, in postseason. And if that were to happen, then I, it's okay. I, I can root for uh, the Yankees. And Dod Dodgers up to that point. And as a race driver's father, you know what it's like to drive because you were a former driver. Is it harder for you to watch him race than when you raced yourself? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's really hard because, uh, you know, I, I can relate. I know what he's going through. I know what it's like to be out there. But also, uh, you know, there's nothing I can do to help him. So it's, it's, uh, it's a helpless feeling, but also a lot of pride. Uh, I really enjoy watching what he's doing, and uh, he's done such a great job. And the support you've gotten from your father, I mean, what's it like to see the look on his face after you win an Indy Lights race and just see the pride and how happy he is? It's, it's really cool, and he, he does help me quite a bit and on and off the track. So, uh, yeah, it's really rewarding to see him happy. And finally, how do things look in your search for an IndyCar ride for next season? I think it's doing, doing good. I've talked to a few teams. Uh, obviously, it's still early, uh, still focusing on the Indy Lights season. But, but, yeah, we've been in talks with a few teams and, and trying to get it together so that we could run uh, full-time next year. Will you be part of your father's team or probably on a different team? Um, you know, we've had discussions about this, and then we've also talked about going to another team. Uh, it, it all depends, I guess, on where every, everybody else plays out and where everybody else is going, and then we'll see where I can go. 
And of course, uh, since Auto Week is an automotive publication, what car do you drive on the streets? I drive a uh, 135i BMW. Not a bad car for a, for a teenager. What about yourself, Mr. Herta? Uh, I've got an Acura uh, RL. Not a bad ride either. Very okay, nice. the racing herd is Brian and Colton. Thank you for joining us today at Auto Week. Thank, Thank you. you.